Okay, so now that we talked about oncotic pressures and hydrostatic pressures, we're ready to go over a clinical correlation, okay? Now, give me a disease state that gives me lower extremity edema bilaterally. Okay, what's one disease that gives me that? How about CHF, right? Congestive heart failure. Now, congestive heart failure is a general term. Always remember, okay, there's right-sided heart failure, and there's left-sided heart failure, okay? So remember, it's just because you know you have congestive heart failure doesn't mean you have necessarily both. Yeah, a lot of the patients with CHF might have both, but for the t for the test purposes, uh, always remember, you know, differentiate them both, okay? Now it's um, CHF, right? Now, what happens in CHF? What's going on, and why do they have lower extremity um, edema, right? Well, let's take a look at a picture of the heart. Okay, let's take a look at a heart. Okay, now, we have our right atrium here, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle, right? Now, what supplies the blood to the right atrium? My IVC, right? The inferior vena cava. What's the second thing? The superior vena cava, right? Now, what's happening in congestive heart failure? Well, um, normally, blood is coming up from the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. And what does it do when it gets here? It goes down into the right ventricle, and from the right ventricle, it goes to the pulmonary artery, etc., to the lungs, uh, and so on. Well, in right-sided heart failure, we have chronic damage of your uh, cardiac muscle here, okay? Chronic damage of the right ventricle and your right atrium. This muscle that normally contracts in, normally it'll contract in, in systole to push uh, the blood from the right atrium to the right ventricle and then to the pulmonary artery. What, this is what it normally does, but when you have chronic ischemic changes to this muscle here, the cardiac myocytes, will they be able to contract as well as they did? No, they won't be able to contract as well. Now, if they can't contract, can the right atrium bring blood to the right ventricle? No. And if it can't bring blood to the right ventricle that easily, what happens? The blood here just backs up. It backs up, backs up. It's like a clog in the drain, okay? The drain is clogged. And what's happening to the blood that's here in the inferior vena cava? Can it come into an empty into the right atrium? No, the right atrium is full. It's completely full. And so this blood here that's coming up through the inferior vena cava tends to kind of not really go backward, but just tends to stay there. It can't come up. So this just, all this blood just builds up. So now if I ask you, in this capillary here, if the blood is building up, what's happening to the hydrostatic pressure here in the inferior vena cava and the right atrium and at all these other blood vessels? The hydrostatic pressure will increase. Make sense? Because remember what we said? More blood, more volume more hydrostatic pressure, right? So we have a really big increase in hydrostatic pressure here in my lower extremities. All the veins that, because the inferior vena cava makes up all of the femoral veins which drain all the blood from my lower extremities, right? So if all that blood can't go up, if it can't go up, it stays here, and what happens? Leakage of fluid, right? Leakage of plasma into my interstitium. And that's why all that uh, interstitium leaks there and causes edema, okay? It causes edema, bilateral lower extremity edema. Makes sense? Because of all of that increased hydrostatic pressure, okay?